Hey guys, the secret of happiness is to count your blessings while others are adding up their troubles. That's by William Penn. Hey everybody, this is your girl No Longer Bound. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wednesday. Changing your attitude Wednesday. Changing my attitude Wednesday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And in case you're new here, this is your girl, No Longer Bound. And we are here on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. We're here on Sundays at 12.30. And we're here on Fridays at 2 p.m. For our book reviews, you got to join us, okay? Just subscribe. Hit that little picture down in the right-hand corner. Smash, smash it. Subscribe, like, share. Yes. So let me, listen, listen, listen. I pray. I like to do this. I pray, I pray, I pray. That you're having a blessed day. You are blessed in your city. You are blessed in your field, in your home, in your job. You are blessed in your health. You are blessed in your mind. You are blessed in your wealth. You are blessed in your spirit. I pray that you are the head and not the tail. That you are above, always, never down, never beneath. And that you are upward and forward only in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, that's for you. That's for you. Come on, let's get started. That you are no longer bound. You are no longer bound. But you are free. Let's get started with the word. All right. So our book is Attitude is Everything. Okay. And we are picking it up from our Stop Complaining series. And we're on page 79. For those of you that have the book, we're on page 79. And we're talking about when you have every reason to complain. So let's bring the music back later. When you have every reason to complain. You're talking about stop complaining. You don't know my story. So we're going to talk about a story from a young man. I think it was a young man. And um, his name is Pedro. Let's just read it. He says he had every reason to complain. Several years ago, he says, I was in my office and thinking about some of the things that weren't going as well as I had planned. You know, the typical business problems, results not happening as fast as I, I, I had expected. And I'd confess that I'd been doing a little complaining about it. Then Pedro walked in. Pedro, in his early 20s, and came to this country, the U.S., about six years ago from Honduras. He works for a company that cleans homes and offices. I had one of those companies, y'all. I know what it's about. You talk about a positive attitude. Pedro is one of the most positive people I had ever met. Always smiling and upbeat. You know, you don't trust those people. You think something's got to be up. That's my little pin. But on this day, however, I asked Pedro about a Hurricane Mitch and, it, and, and, and its impact on his homeland. The smile quickly left his face. He told me of the devastation the hurricane had caused. Thousands of people had died. More than a million people were left homeless. Pedro said that his father, mother, brother still lived in Honduras. And he had no idea if they were dead or alive. He had no way to contact them. All the phone lines in an area had been destroyed. Pedro said he thought about his family every day. Can you imagine the agony of not even knowing if your family is still alive? Then Pedro went on to tell me about all the things he had done to help people in Honduras. He was collecting money, clothing, and other necessities. He was actively working with the relief organizations. Instead of just griping, 
about the problem, he went, he, he was doing whatever he could do to ease the pain. Again, the secret of happiness is to count your blessings while others are adding up their troubles. That's by William Penn. After speaking with Pedro, I began to realize just how inconsequential my own problems were and how fortunate I am. You better believe I stopped complaining. I faced the rest of the day with a renewed energy as much a much better attitude. By the way, several weeks later, I saw Pedro again. And yes, he had his usual winning smile. Y'all like my smile? <laughs> and his great attitude. The good news is that his family members are all alive. The bad news is that they lost everything in the flood and are now living in a shelter. Clean water is very scarce. Disease is rampant. I can't even fathom what it's like to lose everything you own and have to start all over from scratch, especially under these difficult conditions, can you? There's no doubt about it. Pedro had, has every reason to whine about his family's bad luck. But he doesn't. He doesn't. He realized that he realizes that complaining would be a terrible waste of his time and energy. Thank you, Pedro, for reminding all of us that complaining is not the answer to our challenges in life. Oh my God, putting things in perspective, there's another valuable lesson that we can learn from Pedro. And that's the importance of keeping things in perspective. Over the years, I've noticed that complainers like perspective. They tend to blow their problems way out of proportion. Optimistic people, people with great attitudes, tend to have a sense of what's truly important in life. Quote, reflect upon your present blessings, of which every man has plenty. Not only your past misfortunes, of which all men have some. Charles Dickens the dictionary defines perspective as, quote, the capacity to view things in their true relationship or relative importance, unquote. Think about the people you know. Do you have any friends who get bent out of shape because they got a flat tire? And how about those who sever uh, ties, oh my God, with close family members because of a dispute over a seating arrangement at a wedding? Oh my God. It's clear these folks have lost the sight of the relative importance of things. I think we can all learn from Eddie Rickenbacker, who drifted in a life raft for 21 days, hopelessly lost in the Pacific. After surviving the ordeal, Rickenbacker said, if you have all the flesh, I'm, I'm sorry, fresh, what do you want to drink and all the food you want to eat? You ought never complain about anything. Let me share with you some of the things I'm grateful for. I'm in good health. Mm. My family or my loved one is in good health. We have our own home or I have my own apartment. We have plenty of food to eat, clean water to drink. We live in the United States and enjoy freedom. I love my work. I get to travel and meet fantastic people. I have many loyal friends. I draw strength from my relationship with God. This is just a partial list of the blessings in my life. And you know what? Even with all of these wonderful things, there are times when I start to take some of them for granted. I'm going to stop right there. My challenge to you today is that you make a list. That you do as the old Christian hymn says. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings today, everybody. Change your attitude. Change your life. This is your girl. No longer bound. We will see you next time. Be